Hello, fellas. Today I'll be demonstrating how to create a super duper calendar template in Adobe InDesign. So let's get started. Let's create a new document. I changed the units to inches and I'd like to have a 10 inches by 20 inches document as we'll be making a traditional folded calendar, the kind you open up and hang on your wall. So we're going to want a long document, but also keep in mind that you could apply the techniques in this tutorial to any dimensions you prefer. I also choose to have a 0.5 margin on all sides. I'm going to use this as a guideline for a general safe area for my content. And I'd also add a 0.125 inch bleed on all sides as the top of our calendar is going to feature large full bleed imagery meaning the images will extend all the way to the edge of the page with no visible border or white space. So once our setting is done, I'll hit create. I know it looks like a big long page, but take into account that it's a long page as it will be folded in half. The top portion will have the image and the bottom the calendar. Also, we'll be working on the A master because we can't be individually entering dates and the rest of the settings on each of the 12 pages of 12 months. So whenever we make a calendar, it's always the master page that gets filled as a template. My pages panel is already here. However, for any reason, if you don't see yours, just go to window and you'll find the pages option there. The shortcut to bring it is Command F12 on a Mac and uh, Control F12 on a PC. Let's double click on a master and ensure that the ruler is visible. If yours is not visible, just go to view and you'll find the show ruler option sitting under it. The shortcut to bring the ruler is Command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC. I'd like to divide the page into two equal halves as I'll be using the top portion for the image and bottom for calendar. So let's click and drag a guide from the ruler and place it at the 10 inch mark. It's time to create the table for the calendar. So let's go to table and then create table. And from the pop-up menu, update the settings to five body rows and uh, seven columns. We also need one header row for the days of the week. This will give us five rows for the weeks of each month because they don't always uh, neatly fit into four tidy weeks. Uh, one header row to list the days of the week and seven columns for the days themselves, so which is Sunday through Saturday. Once you click OK, you'll see your cursor change. Click and drag to place the table. Now that we've placed our table, we can resize it. So hover your mouse over any of the dividing lines and your cursor will change to resize handles. Click and drag to resize the topmost row as it doesn't need to be as big as the dates themselves. Now using the text tool, add the days of the week to each cell and then I'm going to center align it both horizontally and vertically from the toolbar above and uh, I'd like to change the font to freehand and let's also increase the font size to about 16 points. Perfect. Now let's go to window and then styles and then table styles from there. And from the pop-up menu, click on Create New Style button at the bottom of the panel and let's rename it to Calendar Style. We don't really want to change much here except the table border weight to two points and uh, let's set the color to black. And this is something optional so you can always skip doing this. Similarly, I had made a cell style with the name of days of the week. I think with my days of the week selected, I'd like to just change the background of the cell. So let's double click on days of the week cell style and under strokes and fills, let's change the cell fill to black and uh, tint to 10. So it's going to give us a gray background for the days of the week. 
When it comes to the dates, we could manually go in and add them, but this would take an awfully long time. Instead, let's try adding the dates with a numbered list. So, double click the first cell in your calendar where your dates should begin. This should select both the cell and the text tool. Then go to type and then under type go to bulleted numbered list and apply numbers to insert a numbered list. You won't see anything here until you type something. So go ahead and type a space, just a space. Now you should see a one with a period after it. Usually in a calendar, we don't really see numbers with a period after them. So let's go ahead and customize how this number looks. So go to window and then properties to open up the properties panel. Mine is already here, so I don't need to do much. Okay, from here, we can find the bullets and numbering panel at the bottom. Just click on options sitting right next to it. Now from the pop-up menu, you'll see numbering style. All we need to do is next to the number option, delete the full stop and then circumflex. Circumflex is the small pointy thing and uh, T. So full stop, circumflex and T you should delete. So eventually you should be left with circumflex and hash and then hit OK. You can find now that the period after the number is gone. Now let's style the number. So I'm going to select the number and let me change the font size to 24 and uh, I'll change the font to Poppins Light Italics. Finally, to copy and paste the digit to the rest of the cells, I'm going to just highlight the first cell, then go to Edit and Copy. And then I'm going to click and drag to select all of the cells, the calendar cells, and then go to Edit and Paste. And you should see your calendar filled in with numbers and in perfect order as well. Yes, it will be more than the normal 28 to 31 days we see in a calendar month, but that's okay. You can easily delete excess days. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, let's go ahead and add the month to the composition. So I'll grab the text tool and make a text box right above my calendar and type in January as it's the first month. Uh, I'll change the font to brush script and uh, the font size should be around 72 points and then I'll center line it from the toolbar above. Now it's time to add the image on top so let's grab the rectangle frame tool and create a rectangle where I want my image covering the entire top area including the bleed as well as we want our image from one corner to another without any white space. And then let's go to File and Place and then locate the image from the computer. Right click on the image and then go to Fitting and under that select the Fit Content to Frame option and there you go. Your January calendar is almost ready. Let me remind you that this is just a template and that's one of the reasons why I never deleted the extra dates from 32 to 35 because whatever changes we make now should be on the pages document and not the master. So let's head to page one by double clicking on the thumbnail of page one. Now let's say the first day of the month starts on Thursday here we have it starting on Sunday at this point. All we need to do is select the days prior to the start of the month and hit backspace or delete on your keyboard. But can we really do that? Because it was done on the master page and we're not allowed to change whatever's there on the master page. Because if we try clicking on the pages document, it won't select anything. But guess what? We are allowed to override the master page. We can do that by clicking while holding Shift and Command on a Mac or Shift and Control on a PC and it will select the text and the days will vanish as if they were never there. Also notice how the days adjust themselves to the correct start date. To add another month to the calendar, all you need to do is click on Create New Page option at the bottom of the Pages panel. Then change the heading from January to February. 
And the last thing you need to do is delete the extra days from this calendar. So the month of January ended on Saturday, which means we need the 1st February to fall on Sunday. Hence, we need to remove the entire last row from this calendar. Just remember, to override the master page, all you need to do is hold Shift and Command on a Mac or Shift and Control on a PC while clicking to make changes. Then select the entire row and hit delete. Let's change the image for the month of February to something else like in most of the calendars. So let's go to file and place and locate the image and put it here. Alright, so that's all the fun of creating calendars in Adobe InDesign. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I expect you to try to make a calendar for yourself as we're still in the second month of the year. So I'm going to see you soon with the next one. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye and thanks for watching.